Good morning, this is Daybreak and thank you for staying with us. The hashtag on X is Daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at IU. Abdikadir, yes, Honda Vanda Binabura, you had a point before we went on a break. Yes, uh, I, I just wanted to weigh in on um, an issue raised by Honorable Miremba, which is very critical for us as a country. <clears throat> One of the good things about the 2010 Constitution is that it provides that for anything that happens around us, yeah. that concerns us mm -hmm. and concerns the public, there must be public participation. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that reason, I want to loud teachers this commission to have thought through a document uh, a to, uh, that has been with us since 2012, the, the Teacher Service Commission Act, and said, look, we need to look through the experiences we have gone through and suggest amendments and take it to the public to debate. And I want to loud uh, uh, Cupid for taking, seizing the opportunity. And I still want to appeal to Nat that there is no other way. Yeah. There's no other way. The way is let's sit on the table and raise all the issues we want to raise and come to a common understanding. However, in all the things we do, we must remain constitutional. Because our fidelity to the constitution is what creates law and order. Mm -hmm. There are rough ages <coughs> which we have learned over time, since yeah. we started mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, this new constitution, since 2012, since the Teacher Service Act came into operation, those rough ages, we have an opportunity to sit and ask ourselves, mm -hmm. how do we uh, navigate through this? And one of them is the dual role of training, which is both at the parent ministry and is resident in TSC. So the question would be, what is this aspect of training do we want TSC to handle? And what is the aspect of training do we leave the ministry to handle? And these are the things that when we, we sit on the table, as a family yeah. who negotiated this constitution, and I'm very happy that we still have people who sat in bombers People who sat in the negotiation are still living and are still players, including Miremba here. They are still players in this sector. So we can still come back together and say, look, let us demarcate and have this for Nabi and let's have this for Miremba. Okay. And it will still work for the country. But as truly spoken, and I've said this, I've agreed with my, 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 my colleague here many times. I've, even in the committee, I've told the committee that <clears throat> the working party report is unconstitutional. Okay, but Honorable Nabi, I'll come to you as one. You have, you have pointed out two points of um, um, divergence. Th th that is uh, one domiciled in terms of um, the teachers' training and management to TSC and also the ministry having a portion of some responsibility. Before we come to the unions and the teachers, how can, how would, can these differences between the ministry and TSC be keyword because the minister has not received well the invitation extended to us the Ezekiel Machogu led docket to attend the stakeholders meeting at the Kenya School of Government. Because clearly the differences are playing out in uh, Yes, uh, one of the things uh, uh, I ask myself, do we agree that TSC is a constitutional commission? Do we agree that they have a right to recommend changes on their own act. And if so, if they invited players, including me, including anyone else, what, what is the, 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 the problem in going to voice your issues on that floor? That's how you, 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 you live. In any case, this country has moved away from where there is a one-man syndrome yeah. to, a, to a, a situation where everything is negotiated. Everything is participatory. And I think from where I sit, TSU was giving all of us an opportunity to have an input. All right. And Hezbon, what then 
um, informed your position not to attend and, and voice your concerns, even if you had some reservations, which were appointed earlier on to attend with other stakeholders like COPET, which attended, and the uh, Kenya Union of Special Needs Education teachers who attended the meeting with the TSC on the proposed amendments to the Teacher Service Commission Act of 2012. Why not attend the meeting? Yeah, first of all, uh, as I started with my comments, I said we did not attend, not because we did not agree with the process that was going on there. Yeah. We did not attend because we felt that the Teacher Service Commission had not given us adequate time to look at the draft because they had just given us the draft and they wanted our comments. Being a very serious union, we could not just allow ourselves to go and discuss the matters of the amendments in a shallow manner. And we did not want to attend uh, to append our signature to a situation whereby they just said that we had called the stakeholders and they had attended, and here is a registration to prove their attendance. But but let me finish. No, let me finish. You'll proceed. No, let me finish. There is an inconsistency in, in your no, statement. No. Okay, the, allow, the, me, allow me to point this out. You'll yes. proceed. I'll give you the adequate time to respond, because. Um, the SG, Colin, says if you look at the draft proposal page by page, it's very punitive to the teachers. We are not ready to be scolded anymore. It seems to have gone through the document. You I'm, you I'm, I'm still proceeding okay. with my submission. I said we needed to give our full view about what was supposed to be amended and our view to the document. And what we needed to do was to look at it properly. We have a structured manner of going through a document. We have organs that need to give us their views, and we wanted to go through this. We are not even refuting, and we are not even castigating uh, Coopet attending, because they had the authority of the organs to attend, and they did, and maybe they were well prepared to, to do that. But in our view, and I, told, I started by saying, generally by looking at it, it looked punitive, and I've even showed you some of the things that we feel are autocratic mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the act. But what we wanted to do, and we have done it in full, and we have included, look at this document. This document is a HR document. It is a management document. Mm -hmm. It is a legal document. And we needed to have all the perspective can, that can make us give our views and well-informed views to the Teacher Service Commission. We have done it. We have prepared a draft that we are ready to submit, and we are ready to, part to sit with the TSE. Remember, teachers are major stakeholders in this issue of the amendment. And it, it, we should not just be taken and carried by uh, to, 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 the, to, to, to the stakeholders forum like any Dick, Tom, and Harry. In fact, my brother, Omboko Milemba, okay. what I expected Teacher Service Commission to do, even before they held that forum, was to call us and ask us to give them our views as representation of the teachers, as teachers ourselves, on what they wanted to put in this document before it went to the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And that is why we said we needed to be given time so that we can discuss. Already now, as KNUT, we did not just abscond. We wrote to the Teacher Service Commission, and we told them we will have time with them. We have even now requested that we sit down with them, and we give them our input on the document. And that is what we will do. It is very good, and I want to concur with uh, both who are here, who I highly respect, yeah. that it is time for us now to really look at the, the management of education through the review of this act, and that the major step that will happen is we look at all the loopholes and all the challenges that have been in this act, so that together we can make an act that is accommodative to the people who it will be applied to. And majorly, the people it will be applied to are the teachers. Remember, this is a teacher, okay. as, uh, it is a teacher's act, because it is the Teacher Service Commission's act. Yes. Yes. And the teachers should be made comfortable in this act before it is applied or be, before it is approved. And that is why, as Kenya National Union of Teachers, we feel that we still need proper conversation with the Teacher Service Commission yeah. on what goes in here. Okay. Even including my brothers in Copet, we yes. need to sit down and look at this properly. Okay. Yes, as major stakeholders. Yeah. Honorable Milemba, when you attended the meeting and uh, you argued that there's need for the uh, separation of power so that the employer concentrates with the staffing and teachers welfare as another entity handles the regulatory mandate. How so? How can this happen? Well, I'm, I'm going to deal with that. But before then, I must also give solutions because we have been in this uh, business a little bit longer. Uh, 
the only way we shall deal with uh, those uh, rivalries between the ministry and uh, the teacher service commission is to actually uh, review the teacher service commission act mm -hmm. but we shall also be expecting that the education act also should be lined up for some yeah. review mm -hmm. because you know we can align them to the extent that they don't affect the constitution uh, where possible so that they are uh, able to function for instance uh, some of the presidential working party uh, recommendations if they were to be brought to parliament in a sessional paper you know they would then be panel beaten but in whichever way yeah. they cannot change the constitution where those changes will not be in tandem with the constitution they will fall and they will fall in the morning so there's the much we can do but there's the much we may not do uh, I also would want to give a historical perspective of why the Teacher Service Commission was separated from uh, the Education mm -hmm. Ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, the arguments we are going through are things that we were there before. Formerly, teachers were employed by several bodies, anybody including the church, mm -hmm. some were employed by the ministry, some were employed by private sector, and all sorts of forms. So the teachers could not have a particular place to draw powers of everything. Mm -hmm. Discipline was being done haphazardly, both at the ministry, both at teacher service commission, both at the church, both at private institution. Registration of teachers was also being done in a similar way. I want to remind the Deputy Secretary of KNUT that they realized that gap, and in fact, you led the way in demanding for creation of one particular body to deal with teachers' matters. Yeah. And in fact, Teacher Service Commission is a creation of the unions, and in particular KNUT. And they did a very good job. So, so where we are, we are on the right track to have one employer, to have one center mm -hmm. of power for teachers of Kenya, so that teachers are not dealt with in different quarters, as it were. Coming back to your question. Mm -hmm that how can we, because this is now with the elephant in the house, yeah. and this is what we need to achieve. What we need to achieve is that having looked at the constitution and having looked at the fact that they have powers of regulation, mm -hmm. then uh, we actually in the act, because the act can explain the constitution, and then the regulation will further explain the act. We put a body under the ampit of teacher service commission, uh -huh. That will work as a regulatory body and a professional body, yeah. dealing with issues of discipline, with the compositions that we need to be there, dealing with the registration of the teachers, with the composition being there. It will actually bring uh, 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 a center of power that will include also other professionals, unions, people from the ministry. Yeah. I also want the Teacher Service Commission to be mag magnanimous. When you are given powers like the ones you have, you don't boast about them but you become magnanimous and bring other players on board so that the, the, the institution is working effectively. So we put it under the ampit as a wing of teacher service commission, but then we create a regulatory professional body just like the other bodies that are existing. Yeah. One reason why teachers even pay has not been given proper attention yeah. is that we were being regarded as a non-professional unit but we want to professionalize and these are a, a, a chance we have we have another gap we have the gap of discipline the teacher service commission begins the discipline process acts as the disciplinarian and also acts as the appeals yeah, tribunal yeah. Mm -hmm. we have a chance using that wing of a professional body to actually reconstitute the composition of the appeals tribunal for teachers so that the, 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 the person who has actually uh, begun the, the process of discipline is not the yeah. one whom you also appeal to. Oh, okay. We have a chance to also, using this bit, deal with promotion of teachers, which has been a gap that is so big that now we can use this act and the regulation that will follow to secede from the CBA of 2016 yes. in Naivasha, yes. which has blocked Zero. promotions. Mm. Put you we together. Until in that way, we shall yeah. achieve much more for teachers yeah. if we use that particular direction. Okay. That's the gap me I'm seeing, yeah. and that's why I'm following this thing very keenly. Yeah. It was a good given chance, and it should be. Yes, Honorable Nabi, and can these gaps be breached? <laughs> because he mentions the welfare of the uh, teachers. Yeah, yeah. He also supports the rethinking of the continuous training of the teachers. Yeah. That, that's what you also uh, 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 submitted uh, when, when, when you attended the Secularist uh, Conference at, at the Kenya School of Government. How, how can this, all, all these points of divergence be harmonized? Uh, 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 <clears throat> I like the magnanimity with which uh, the chair of COPET, who is my colleague, 
is looking at this uh, uh, issue. Truth be told, I started by telling you that if we all remain uh, faithful to the Constitution, we have solutions within us. It is true that we can fill the gaps. On the discipline, by the way, the, the courts have already laid the foundation and the background how they would like the discipline of teachers to be handled. So that you are not the prosecutor and the judge at the same time. We should be using this opportunity to realign that within the act. That what are the issues of rights? What are the issues of administrative action? Mm -hmm. And how do we ensure fairness in the whole process? That we can do. Number two, it is true that we can create an institution within TSC. Okay. We could, it could, you know, to handle regulatory matters of teachers. How do you do that? Through parliament? Through the act. Mm -hmm. Through this act. Through the act. Through this amendment. Okay. Because we just provide for what you need. To, it could be a directorate. It could be, but then it, you bring in other players so that it, it meets the professional etiquette of any other regulatory body around. You know, doctors have a regulatory body. True. Okay? Engineers have a regulatory body. Teaching is a profession. It requires a regulatory body. And we are saying within the TSC, yeah. because it's their mandate constitutionally, we create an institution within TSC that deals with the regulation. That is true. But please, I want to remind my colleagues, let us remember that as we do all this architectural work of the Act and the regulations, we must remember that we want to deliver curriculum mm -hmm. to the child, to the benefit of the person called the learner. As we do this, yeah. we must also remember that we need an outfit that will deliver yeah. the aspiration yeah. of the Kenyan people. Okay. Um, es Esbon, uh, coming to you, I mean, one of the major points of opposition to the uh, proposals as contained in the um, TSC proposals, um, it, it wants the employer to have the powers to determine teacher salaries in accordance with Article 237 of the Constitution that gives salaries and the Remuneration Commission advisory role on civil servants. And th this is what you are also majorly concerned about. But the problem is you're not attending these meetings. Then how would you engage the TSC? Because as provided for under the Constitution, you created and majorly you supported that cause to create the Teacher Service Commission to centralize and harmonize the teachers at a point of focus. And now you are distancing yourself from engaging the TSC, yet it has the constitutional mandate to determine some things here. So how, how would you voice your opposition in wanting to cost correct all the op opposition that you have? I, I like the way you're hammering on <laughs> just one thing of not attending one meeting, <laughs> and then you're putting it in plural meetings. <laughs> we did not attend one meeting. It doesn't mean that we have never attended meetings with the TSC. Which is a very if, important meeting. No, 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 let me, let me just come to this. <laughs> Even um, my, my brother Mboko knows that <laughs> the last meeting we were, we signed a CBA yeah. with the Teacher Service Commission. It is only that this particular meeting we yeah. did not attend, yeah. and we have given reasons why we did not attend. And that does not stop us even from having a meeting with the TSC and giving them our views, which we have done. And I had said from the onset that the issue, and this issue of, you see, when we talk about with this SRC determining the terms and conditions of service and the remuneration of the teachers, yeah. in itself removes the role of the unions in, in, in collective bargaining. Because I think the, 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 the word determine is so conclusive in that we have no role to play. And that is why we have always had problems with the SRC, the advisory role of SRC vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the directions that are given by SRC that become like it is law 
to the Teacher Service Commission. So, and I've said we have looked at the document and we have even now summarized and we are submitting our, our views to the Teacher Service Commission. That is still a conversation. Okay. We have even, even requested for a meeting with the Teacher Service Commission, mm -hmm. which I know they will provide because the issue is to listen to us, we are stakeholders, and that one we will do. So let us not look about not attending one meeting, which we had very good reasons and we wrote to the Teacher Service Commission. Yeah. But by and large, yeah. I want to agree with something that Waishimi was saying. It is an opportunity for us, like for example, my brother Umboko, there is one body that is uh, uh, supposed to negotiate. There is a whole section that they are saying we delete that forms a tribunal that deals with the negotiations of salaries for teachers. Mm -hmm. It was there before in the act. And now they are talking about delete all of that. Then it means that they now don't want unions on the table. They want to sit down on themselves. And we have recommended that that area should not be deleted. We should have a body yeah. that deals, a well-constituted body that deals with the, uh, with the collective bargaining negotiations, where the unions will be involved, where the Teacher Service Commission will be involved, and with an independent chair, you see. And the number should be well stipulated so that we have a, a, a very clear cut uh, above board negotiations for teachers' salary. And that one is, is something that we have observed in this, and we need to give our views to Teacher Service Commission, which we have done. And we want that to be very clear. Yeah. There is a, a, a lot of perspective yeah. to deal with what the TSC, the powers that the TSC wants to take. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity has come to us. Okay. And that is why we needed to look at the act and come and give our genuine, well-researched and deep thought uh, 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 take to the document. Yeah. That is why we now felt yes. that at that time, yeah. we were not ready to do that. Y yes, OK. Uh, ambush. Uh, so don't keep on hammering the yeah. issue of not attending one meeting yeah, it, it, to be it, like it is, a, it is causing a lot of rift. Yeah. I saw one of the newspapers even writing that the unions have, have, have disagreed on the attendance of the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> the Coupet have their own ways of making decisions, and they did attend. Yeah. KNUT has its own way of making decisions, and we did not attend. That does not mean that we disagreed. Okay, but, so but, people should understand the yeah. perspective in which unions sit on the table whenever they make decisions. Yeah. Also. And, and there are important issues of discussion to that effect, then, whether um, Coupet attends, whether not attends, yeah, yeah. because it regards teachers, and teachers are the molders of the professionals that are building or contributing to the nation building exercise here in the country. Therefore, um, just reporting on, on, on how critical issues are coming up for debate in regards to also what, what we have uh, canvassed here this morning so far. And <clears throat> coming to you, Mwalimu Omilemba, and this is on your call for the rethinking of uh, the continuous training of the teachers. I mean, this is a major point that you made as part of your submissions on, 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 on the, during the meeting with the Teacher Service Commission. How do you think this can be addressed? Because you have pointed out a very critical component of what seems to be a problem in the, in the learning process in Kenya. I should now begin by just answering the question directly. Uh, we have what we call CPG, the, um, the Continuous Career progression uh, Development Progression, whatever that is. Okay. Uh, and uh, it is a new aspect being brought in by the Teacher Service Commission. Uh, when they first brought it up, the teachers were in arms and the teachers were threatening to go on strike. So I moved to Parliament and made a petition, yeah. and that petition did suspend that process from then, that was the 12th Parliament, to to date. Now I've seen they are bringing it under this particular act. And uh, why they want to bring it is actually to beat what we had done through Parliament, so that now they have a chance of uh, doing the continuous development uh, training for the teachers. Uh, now, as they do that, ordinarily that's a function of a regulatory and professional body. And that was the argument we had even in the 12th parliament. And uh, that's why I'm saying that we need to create that body within themselves. And I talked about the magnanimity that I want them to have. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this particular training, they want to change so that a teacher will not only have a registration certificate for teaching as a basis yeah. to be a teacher, 
but also will be required to have a practicing certificate continuously. This practicing certificate, this for the sake of Kenyans, will be renewed the same way the lawyers or the doctors renew their practicing certificate. Mm -hmm. Certainly this will come at a cost of paying every year and blah, 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 blah. So then, that's why for me, I think we could seize that opportunity and create a body within themselves that will then have inclusion of all players to make this determination because part of their functions may not be just to, 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 to do that alone. Furthermore, I'm also looking at this uh, creation of uh, their training program yeah. as being very mean because they have also made uh, it within this particular law that they are the ones who will choose the institutions that will train teachers in this program. So I was looking at the where's the place of the procurement processes when choosing such a such a such a players in yeah. the body, and where's the place of other players? You don't just say you will choose. In the last uh, situation where they tried to create this body, they had chosen three universities. I don't want to mention them, mm -hmm. but I'll mention the one that was not chosen. That's why Kenyans were up in arms. They did not choose Kenyatta University, which is the home bed of teaching. teaching. So we thought even that choosing itself was not fair. So those are the things we want to panel bit within the law so that we are able to achieve yeah. for that particular package. Yes. And also who pays for the training? Ordinarily, mm. where we have professional training that is being given by an employer, the employer pays for it. And we can put it even in this act, and I'm happy. There's a legislator and a member of the education committee. I'm no longer in the education committee. He's a real authority there. Mm -hmm. Who will tell you that if we put it in law, it will be the business of government to look for money and train teachers? So let's not behave like we are doing this thing as the only players yeah. in the field. It can be put there and we say that it is the business of the employer to train. Okay. That will make the exchequer look for money to train for these particular teachers in this program. And that's why I agree with Nabin Abuera, that negotiation on table will be very, very, very vital okay. when making this law. But a few other things which I also wanted to tell you is the issue which I saw also in the Teacher Service Commission uh, Amendment Act 2024, where they have gone around shopping for all sorts of mistakes in all statutes and other legal uh, instruments in this country. And they have gathered 46 of them which when the teacher is appearing before them, they will be looking at the 46 mistakes that the, the, this teacher may have made. Some of have been shopped from all statutes all over. I just wondered what, why that was happening. And I loved it when Nabin Abuela talked about the court's pronunciation on, okay. on, the, on how to deal with the discipline of the teachers. Because the Teacher Service Commission does not need to turn itself into a court dealing with all mistakes that can be done by an individual, no. It only deals with the professional mistakes. But all other mistakes can then go to the courts because that's why the courts are there. I cannot stop without, please, your indulgence, yeah. without speaking on the issue that Otieno has raised. It's very important that when it comes to remuneration, the, the unions are involved. And the unions can be involved by actually looking at the amendment which they are saying that they'll determine the teacher's salaries in regard and in consideration of section 230, which is the SRC, but leaving out section 41, which is the teachers' union. Okay. And I think that's why Tienu must join me in the next meeting yeah. to make sure that 47, 41, <laughs> yes. uh, 230, yes. and 237 are quoted in law. Once that is done, yeah. then the CBA process will ensure. Okay. But let me finally speak about the body which is being removed and which he has spoken about. That body was called the Teachers' Service Remuneration Committee. And it had membership. Yes. And they are trying to remove it and replace it with nothing. What do we need to go and do when we meet them? Yeah. Because we have not met them properly. Yes. That was a showbiz. Yes. We should actually replace this body with another body that is including section 41, section 230, 37. and section 237. Yes. So that then it's involved. It's involved. Because okay. if we just leave them to remove it, yeah. they'll be arguing that this body was, was determined by the courts to be a nomenclature. You know, there's, there are times when we took, went on strike and went to go to TSC for a long time in the Supreme Court. And the then Attorney General, when he appeared, he scared us with some <laughs> terminologies that yes. nomenclature. And indeed, <laughs> this body was declared that it should not exist. This one, Teachers Service Remuneration Committee. Yes. But as we remove it, 
we were actually being given a chance yeah. to replace it yes. with a proper one. Yes. We can only do it yeah. in this place. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, how, how no, can no, that no, be achieved? No. Yeah. Be. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and this an area of Listen, if this uh, union is, yeah. uh, I see a problem. Yeah. And I need to help them. And what are Please the problems? Yes, I need to help them. <laughs> Number one, uh, on this issue of remuneration, teacher service, and I will be telling the, even the teacher service commission, they cannot write a labor act. We already in this country <coughs> have a labor relations act. It, it places the unions where they are supposed to do, where they are supposed to be, where they are supposed to do, and how they are supposed to engage the employer. Now, if we go the TSE way, the way the, even the colleagues want to be persuaded to join the TSE in doing, what would the, the people in other sectors do? Would they import the issues of labor relations from the mother labor laws to their act? Please, don't fall prey. Mm -hmm. don't, don't fall prey to tears. They want to, uh, please uh, say, can we have the labor relations? And that is why the, the, the labor court has been fair to teachers. Because they have been using the labor uh, laws to determine what is labor relations. Number two, two, as we go into this discussion, where both of us, all of us on this table, agree that teachers, teaching is a profession, yeah. which must be governed by professional uh, code of ethics. Then. My brother Milemba and my brother uh, Ocheno Uteno. must agree that there is certain principles that must apply to a professional body. One of them is continuous training. Okay. It is a requirement it, it, and, and it will help us. Milemba, and I want, I want you as a player and my colleague here, it will help all of us. In this teaching, there are issues. Now, remember, remove your union uh, aspect <laughs> and look at yourself as a member of parliament. <laughs> you know the issues that we are going through in schools. You know? People have to grow. This professional training will help us solve these issues. Sometimes TSE has been accused of appointing a senior teacher, or you call the board, deputy teacher, without following. The only way that you can align this yeah. is when you have a proper professional training. What I agree with me and, and does that exist at the moment? Is that framework available at the moment? No. Actually, the, that's the one he said it was suspended. Yeah, because he, 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 le, le, he made a submission le, to the effect of rethinking the teacher's with the continuous training. That, that is, you, yes. you remember, yeah. you remember, the argument has been that uh, TSE cannot train. We are telling them that the constitution gives them that mandate. And we are saying- And are they doing it? The, the, yes, the, they do, the, 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 to okay. some limited scale, yeah. but in not properly yeah. uh, thought out. Now, this is an opportunity. When you create this professional body, mm -hmm. it will determine, including how many points do you earn for a particular training? Yeah. Okay? Including yeah. who then, what is Milemba is talking about? Who then foots the bill? Very good. Correct. Right? This is an opportunity to realign it. I, 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 one of the things I agree with Milemba on is that I did not agree with the universities that had been chosen to train people. <laughs> One of them is, uh, I have a very negative, low art opinion about it because the, pro the quality of teachers who have come from there are horrible. And it's known. A public or private university? Don't know. Uh, please, I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you, yes. we are, we are in, the, in, the, in the sector. We are in the sector. And, 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 and we relate with this. So this is an opportunity. Yeah. TSE has given to all of us to rethink through and do it. And finally on this, I want to persuade my two colleagues here 
that I've looked at that act. By the way, it recognizes the role of the amendment. It recognizes the role of unions. It does. Go through it. All I want us to do, please, as we go into these negotiations, remember, let us not go the working party way <laughs> to want to undo the Constitution. SRC has a role to play. Okay. We, we cannot downplay it. And the Supreme Court has made a pronouncement, which we must all be alive. Please, let's not go there. Because the Supreme Court has said the advice or opinion of SRC is binding. Yeah, OK. I was in court. Yes, <laughs> it is binding. I was so, so, so really, you cannot downplay it, uh, <laughs> okay. Otieno. You cannot say you will use this act to undo that. That would be another chaotic situation. Okay. Yes, husband, you had a point, please. Yeah, le le let us all agree, and, and, and that is why we are not even, we are speaking the same thing, maybe expressing it differently. That uh, teacher professional development is something that we all should support. Exactly. Yes, because it is the only way that teachers can be put to, to update to the new approaches to teaching and, and uh, growth. And, and growth. Yes, we are supporting that. And even the issue of now the cost, uh, considering that if you put the teachers to, pay, to foot the cost of their training and with the mega salaries that they are earning, then it would be a big challenge. And considering now that if you look at the act, the, these amendments, they're talking about a uh, practicing certificate yeah. being superior than the teaching certificate. Mm. And if we, if we talk about that, then it means that those teachers who will fail to acquire the practicing certificate simply because they cannot meet the cost of training will be endangered in the field. And these are the things that we want aligned properly in this bill so that we say who takes charge of the training of the teachers at whose cost, uh, including where the teachers need to be trained. I, we, we concur that some of the facilities selected are, are not qualitative in terms of teacher training. And so if they are not qualitative, then how do we get facilities? Yeah. Uh, the, the procurement aspect that my brother Mboko was talking about. How do we get facilities that are geared towards teachers' training such that when a teacher goes and is developed, yeah. even those uh, uh, the, the points, the CPT points that the teacher will earn, will be points that uh, express the quality that the teacher has achieved having undergone yeah. the professional development. So this is what we are talking about. And that is why we really need, need a deep conversation. Yeah. And we are ready to, to, to get into the deep conversation even before this comes. And I, I also want to talk to Mwishimu and say, uh, Honorable uh, Nabuera, that the Labor Relations Act, mm -hmm. the Basic Education Act, the TSC Act, all these acts must be realigned so that no act contradicts the other. Immediately we have a gap that one act is contradicting the other one, then we have a problem. And that is why when we, we notice that there are some things in these amendments that are not aligned to the <coughs> Education Act and they are not aligned to the Labor Relations Act, then we have to raise issues and say, for us, our thinking, if you have to align, then this body that uh, Omboko has talked about needs to be brought in properly yes. in this document and not expunged. Well, okay. So that now when you, you, you look at the, 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 TSC, the TSC Act yes. and you look at the Labor Relations Act, they are in tandem in terms of how collective bargaining should be done. And this is why we, we are saying as a union, it is not just a conversation of any dictum and hurry, my brother Mboko Milemba. The, the, your committee is very key. The parliamentary yeah. committee is very key. Yeah. very key. The unions are very key in this conversation and the Teacher Service Commission. The autonomy and independence of the Teacher Service Commission yeah. does not mean that they have all the okay. space. They cannot enjoy the autonomy if they don't have other players to, 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 to notice that that autonomy okay. needs to be displayed. Is so it, that is where we are and that is what we are yes. doing. I, I want to yes, remind uh, you yes, yes. that uh, <laughs> there is no better player than Wanjiko. This thing is created for Wanjiko, the consumer. So he must be on that table. Or she let, let, yes, let, let, let Wanjiko come and say whether oh, yeah. TSE is having uh, her interest or not. Let, let, let Wanjiko come and say, the way we see teachers uh, living with us in the community, they need a better pay, and for them to get a better pay, this is the structure we want. Please. OK. And, and uh, Just say something yes, yes. about what uh, Otieno says here. Otieno. I still want to caution the unions. 
<laughs> as your brother. <laughs> Because one, as a HR expert. Are you, are you cautioned or advising? Advising. <laughs> <laughs> advising. That sometimes, eh, sometimes somebody can be eh, eh, introducing something which he, he knows you will run with it, but to nowhere. The issue of this act amendment has two sides to it. We either get it right and place the unions to where they have been before with, with the TSC and collective bargaining, or we get an act yeah. and continue in the quagmire. Okay. Honorable Omboko Mwalimo, coming to you, uh, talking of who then finances the teachers' professional development, um, I'm looking at the 2023-24, the current financial year, and the education sector has been allocated 628.6 billion. The TSC got a lion's share of that, 316.7 billion for the management of 365 employees. Other major allocations to the include the basic education sector, 65.4 billion for free day secondary school program, 25.5 25 billion for junior secondary schools, 12.5 billion for free primary education, 5 billion for school feeding program, 2.7 billion for secondary education quality improvement project, and 1.3 billion has been budgeted for the training of teachers on the competency-based curriculum. Well, then in terms of the lion's share of what the TSC gets or has gotten, under this financial year. I mean, how difficult is it to make an allocation for the financing of continuous training programs for teachers? Thank you, and I'll go for the question directly. First, but I'll uh, draw it from where Nabi stopped. And I want to put it directly to Nabi that we are not interested in uh, protesting against certain uh, emerging progressive issues in HR which must be adopted. And one of them is the issue of teacher professional development. Mm -hmm. uh, why we did stop that was uh, how to do it, uh, who to do it, and uh, the other details of doing it, including the payments, because at that particular time, they had levied a very big fee on the teachers for that uh, teacher professional development. And they had isolated three universities, which had also fixed that amount. Mm -hmm. We want that put on table, and that's why I find space in this act to deal with this. Uh, when you look at the budget for education, which is uh, 668 billion. 628. 628 is one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. And it's actually taking about 27 or 28% of the entire budget, by the way. But of that chunk, the biggest is what goes to the Teacher Service Commission, about 316 billion. There is also an amount of training, which you have talked about, 6 billion. Yes. And others, which you will not speak about. Because there's both training money at the Teacher Service Commission and at, at, at the, the ministry. This is what we thought should then be used for training of these teachers in the progressive development and not surcharging the teachers per se yeah. at, a, at a very high cost. And those are the issues we need to, to discuss. There's also a lot of money coming in from donors. Yeah. I'm aware the World Bank is bringing in money for, to train teachers, especially when we're undertaking the, the new curriculum. That money is coming in. But the com both the commission and the, uh, the ministry would not declare that, mm -hmm. but would want the teacher to pay for it. But it, that's not my worry. You can look at my argument. I'm already accepting, yes, let's go and look at this, but who pays? In my opinion and our opinion, it should be the Teacher Service Commission and the government to pay. Why? Education, unlike other professions, yeah. is a public good for public consumption. It's not a private good. And it is described in the Constitution. So as we do educate and teach, we are actually providing a public good yeah. for public consumption. It's for the benefit of government. These are the Todarian models of econo economics that when you are teaching or you are earning education, it's for the good of the society, for the government, so that these people can be responsive in the society because they have achieved the education. So we have no quarrel with that, but let's go on table and deal with the model of yeah. how it's done and who pays for it. And that would be my answer to that. Yeah. However, I also wanted to add that uh, the changes that we shall be making within this act, and I've borrowed from uh, Nabuera because me, I keep on learning, 
and picking quickly, we shall be instructing our lawyers to look at the two acts, the Labor Relations Act, yes. what it says, and the TAC Act, what it says. Because mm -hmm. if the Labor Relations Act is also very explicit on this, it's it is good. good. Yeah. But given that this particular item that Otieno has talked about was in the act, would as much as possible want it to be there, but remodeled so that it is actually uh, mentioning uh, the three players, that is 41, 230, and 237. Okay. There is something you've said yes. about cost. And I've seen you many times when I come here. Yeah. You hype this issue about cost in education. I want to make myself very clear. Mm. And my colleague is here. Up to where we are today, even with that budget, we are not able to fund education properly in this country. We still have a shortage of teachers whom we cannot fund. Correct. As I'm talking to you now, grade eight is not being properly taught in this country. For lack of teachers in maths. Chemistry. Uh, chemistry, science actually, call it science, mm -hmm. and English. Because TSE does not have money to recruit those teachers. I've argued in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an economy of over three trillion. Mm -hmm. And therefore, for a third world country that wants to go to second world and be a first world, there's no alternative to education. We should be doing a trillion for education. And, and, and it is a tested model. You know, you cannot be talking about Singapore, you cannot be talking about Malaysia, you, uh, the Asian Tigers, without understanding how much money they e invested in education. Tibet, for example, it is underfunded in this country. As, as we are here, even some of the students in Tibet have no capitation. So what is this issue that uh, uh, TSE has taken so much money? Out of, uh, after all, that money TSE has gotten is in salaries. And our, mm -hmm. our teachers are not one of the best paid anyway. Correct. We, we need to be increasing yeah. more money. Yeah. If you went to one trillion shillings, yes. then a teacher can get a decent salary. So I'm your, tired. Your proposal is um, we add 400 billion. Yeah. To it Why not? Is, uh, Why? Uh, we are actually at 700. It's only 300. So we are 27.8%. Yes. Uh, but, but I only want to tell you on, this. Okay. I only want come to, to ju just something. Okay. The ripple effect of properly funded education is an economic spiral. The ripple effect. If you have properly funded Tibet, my friend, in this country, yeah, you will not have people in the streets all the time. They have nothing to do because they have life skills. They, they, they know how to fend for themselves. Okay. You have a labor force that is ready for industry. In fact, if you fund Tibet, you reduce the amount of money industry is going to spend on training on the job. Okay. Uh, Hezbon, I come to you. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Again, I'll also want to take your point in regards to the e-citizen um, uh, payment of school fees, but first make your submissions. Yeah, I, I, I want to be happy at least uh, Mweshimiwa, not at least, but at this juncture that uh, Mweshimiwa Burudin Nab uh, uh, Nabiyo Nabueta is uh, speaking passionately about funding education and speaking for us. And I'm, I'm very, very happy because people look at whatever is allocated to the teaching sector to be like it is eating into the budget of the country. But that is the basis of even production of human resource. Uh, I want to also say on the teacher professional development, when the Teacher Service Commission was uh, launching its strategic plan for 2023-2027, in that plan, they have an allocation of 11 billion for the capacity building yeah. of teachers through teacher professional development. So the more, then we say that they can cater for they can cater for the trainings of the teachers without teachers going into their pockets to pay for the same because they have already projected yeah. in their strategic plan. So that is something that we need, really need to own and we really need to remind them so that they, 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 they know that they have money that can be used to train teachers. All right. Teachers do not fear capacity building. And uh, actually, that is an avenue for ensuring that we have a more professional uh, workforce within the teaching uh, fr fraternity as a, a profession. So it is the support 
that they get mm -hmm. and the time that is allocated for the same is what we should look for. Thank you. Um, uh, we'll get the uh, feedback shortly um, as uh, that will be uh, prepared uh, for projection on the super wall. Um, and, and this is largely to um, Honorable Omboko Melemba and Hezbon. Kopet Annat says this viewer who is watching the broadcast are not behaving professionally because all these messes and confusion in the education sector are caused by them. Nat and Kupet are the chief architect of the CBC system and both were darlings <laughs> of the Ministry of Education and the Teacher Service Commission, but not representing teachers when they were needed. Um, although Nat had done its feasibility study in 2019 Hesbon, uh, that was uh, Socian's tenure, which you had also done comparative analysis in regards to countries that have rolled out CBC and you had your own reservations about the competency-based curriculum. But what's your response to this wonderful um, yeah, very well, uh, and thank you for that critique. That's what we learn from. But uh, the, the CBC system, I think that should be completely absorbed because that went all the way and rejected it completely. And uh, the rest is details. But me, I supported the CBC system. Okay. And uh, because I thought that uh, the continuous production of or people who could not just get employed and also were just getting out was not good for this uh, for, for the education sector and for the country because uh, I was a student of the A level and I know how, how much wastage was done at A level level and how much wastage was now being done at the university. Remember everybody was going to the universities, universities also went very low and started producing what was called bridging courses. The bridging courses turned out into cheating for, mm. for degrees mm. and you saw that yesterday it's now biting us. Mm -hmm. And that's why you saw in the news, your own news yeah. yesterday, mm -hmm. that so many people have forged certificates. Some forgeries were through those systems of just getting certificates and paperwork for the sake of it. Yeah. And uh, that's why I thought a model of a curriculum like uh, CBC, I support CBC to date. I've been very consistent and I will not relent. A uh, model like CBC would then bring in training at different levels. Like what just Nabi has said, that if we train more people at the Tibet uh, levels, these people would get self-employment. Yeah. Because education is no longer what it was, that you produce the highest papers in terms exactly. of degree, PhD, and exactly. you get employment. And I've severally sung for you here the song of education in the 1960s, yes. went to the sacred cow where if you got the higher education to get the best job and to get the most, you became the most uh, important person in society. So I still support CBC. I don't think uh, we are in the business of destroying education, but yes. mending yeah. and trying to check and oversight uh, moving forward. Okay, I, uh, am, I'm, I'm, I had something to say also. Yes. There was the issue of class of the issue of uh, grade, eight. grade eight, not getting good education. You know, unless I speak about these things, then it becomes difficult for other people to speak about. Mm. And Nabi, I like you for that. The teaching that is going on in grade eight <laughs> and grade seven is not effective. And it is me to speak for now because I'm there, I'm in the sector. Exactly. There are no teachers for English and there are no teachers for physics and mathematics and chemistry yes, and biology. biology. There are no laboratories there. But now, you know, I've learned to be a very uh, modern trade unionist. So I've already talked and we are talking to government institutions yeah. If they can hear, because our issue is to give good proposals, if they can be taken well and good. And that's why you remember when I was last year, I was saying, yes. move grade nine to second schools. In fact, the noise will end for grade nine. If that ever happened next year, the noise will end. Because for grade nine, we shall just grapple, education we shall just be grappling with class eight and class seven to fix the teachers there. Mm -hmm. Get more money to employ teachers, move that grade nine to second school, let many of the schools be day schools where people go and come back. Yeah. After all, now we are seeing even so many deaths in schools, I, yes. AU. Let them be day schools and they, they will get there a free class, Thank you. free toilets, free fields, free laboratories, free everything, and the system will keep Thank you. Because I want the success of uh, uh, Thank I, you. I, I'll give it a Just words. something on this. What Honorable Minemba is saying is the view I hold. Grade nine has no business in junior secondary. You don't have a laboratory in, in all the primary schools. Give me one public. I don't know about private. Give me one public school in Kakamega, a primary school which has a laboratory. 
or a resource center. Mm -hmm. We don't have money. Even we don't have money, even CDF cannot be able to fund that. I have, for example, 100, over 100 primary schools, all having junior secondary. I mean, a modern, a modest resource center would be about 4 million. I will need 400 million in excess of 400 million to create a resource center for each primary school, which I don't have. The most reasonable thing, which also solves the issue of age, which we were grappling with when yeah. we are taking uh, uh, grades yes. uh, seven yeah. and uh, eight to primary, yes. is sorted. Thank a person at grade nine is of age to mingle with secondary school students, senior secondary school uh, students. Uh, thank you. So we move grade nine to secondary second. schools. Okay, uh, you briefly, uh, uh, out of time. Yeah, the conversation about uh, the system and the curriculum let us not mix. Yeah. Uh, Competency-based is a curriculum. And we have the system like 844, like the one uh, that we are now having. So the conversation that we are having now is a bigger conversation when we want to transfer grade nine to secondary school. It will be a complete change of a system. And this is but, something, no, this, no, this is something, Moshimiwa, uh, that uh, needs a bigger conversation so that we can realign mm -hmm. the system to fit the needs as they arise. So let people not uh, confuse the curriculum uh, yes. and the we, system. We, we need to help. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, you'll help me, no, you'll help me one time. No, 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 you, you, no, 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 you'll help me, but I'm saying it's a bigger conversation. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm there to be helped, but it's, it's a bigger conversation. Very good. And I'm not even saying it will end here. Yeah. Yeah. We need to discuss it further, Thank because you. what we need is the best for our students. Yeah. And that is why even at the time of uh, coming up with the competency based curriculum. Yep. We did a research on uh, on teacher preparedness Thank you. and we gave our views. Thank you. So what uh, what I'm saying is we'll have room to debate on this and see which system if there is a change of system yeah. will best suit Much the implementation. We, we don't have time. Much we don't have the luxury I mean, um, of time. We have, we have wasted very, very a whole grade one, eight. We don't you. have a luxury one of bite, time. No. One bite, bite, one bite, bite, one bite. Let's just one bite, one we one have bite, uh, one bite. very uh, I mean tweets that uh, have come in. Let's sample three at the best interest of time. Here's what we're saying on the hashtag uh, daybreak. The SMS code is double two four double two at Citizen TV Kenya and at IU Bubblicadid. And uh, Charles Wood Rose says TSC should not make some serious changes in the education sector without consulting Nat and Coupet. Such serious sector should not be joined, should not be joked with by TSC. All the players are very important in streamlining the education sector in the country. Nene Lazaro says two giants unions, Nat and Coped, needs to be in one vibrant umbrella since they both champion for teachers' rights. Why did they allow government to infiltrate them with the politics, divide and rule tactics? Next is, uh, this one is from Samuel Ward says, I, uh, the, if the recommendations by the presidential working party sail through, this will be key in ensuring spiritual and moral integrity in our society. The president is now, the president is now, says, on the right trajectory in the education sector. Keep it up, ready. Frank Orinde says, TSC reforms drive are antagonistic and punitive. That's the reason there were no consultation with key stakeholders like Nat and Coupet. This trend of undermining the provisions in the constitution that requires public participation is a recipe for chaos. So next on Dugure says, ignoring our or punishing teachers in any form is the other meaning of gambling with the education of our children. A demoralized teacher leads to failure of learners where ordinarily a question follows why exams show poor results. Moiru Anasko Paul says Nat was right and justified in rejecting the invitation to the meeting convened by TSC. The draft by TSC was christened stakeholders draft. How can it be referred to as stakeholders draft yet unions who are not involved in its formulation? TSC must act within the law. Next is from Amanga, Amanganga Mustafa says, the proposed amendment gives the commission more independence and powers, a move that will solve the current situation where some MPs are hawking TSC letters, <laughs> denying some areas <laughs> teachers. <laughs> it's on that note, then we come to a conclusion. Um, uh, gentlemen, your time is all appreciated. And uh, we just had to cut short the feedback from our viewers because of time. Walimu Mboko Milemba, thank you for your time. The MPM Ohio constituency and as well the national chairperson of the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers. Hezbo Notieno, 
thank you so much, the Deputy Secretary General of the Kenya Un National Union of Teachers, Nat, and to the MP Lugari constituency, Honorable Nabin Abuera, who is a member of the National Assembly's Education Committee. Your time is all appreciated, and we look forward to further engagements to better our country. And thanks to you too for waking up with us and watching the broadcast. Up next is Health and Lifestyle, and we discuss home-based care. Stay tuned.